Guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we are back in one of our iron challenges and it's been requested by one of our viewers to test the Titleist T350 versus the Shrixen ZX4. Remember, if you like our videos, please hit that subscribe button and tell all your golfing friends. This has been requested, this one. We've got ZX4 versus T350, two brilliant irons, forged feels, forged faces. They're, they're gonna feel soft. They're designed for that golfer that needs a little bit more help with their game. Um, they're designed to, both designed to hit the golf ball a little bit higher. Um, they're both talking about ball speed and trying to get the ball as far as possible. It's not obviously an iron that we've seen in previous videos that I personally would maybe choose. However, it is good to test them anyway for you guys to see the Trackman numbers. We've had a few comments in the past that we don't put the numbers or enough numbers and enough data up. So the aim of this video today will be just me hitting the shots with the data on the screen, the, the ball flight on the screen. Chris will uh, chop that in for you so you can see what's going on and we'll just have a simple test and get my feedback on the feel of each club. Obviously, we're gonna hit a few ropey shots. You know, I'm not, I'm not a tour player, so um, there are gonna be a few miss hits, but sometimes that's good information for you to have as well. So what happens when we do hit a miss hit? You know, I'm, I'm a big fan in when we're selling golf clubs and when we're fitting golf clubs, what does the six or seven out of 10 strike feel like and result in for a golf golfer because we're not going to play on the golf course with a 9 out of 10, a 10 out of 10 strike. It's great when that happens but the reality is is you're going to play six, sort of 60, 70, 80% of your golf at that level. So I, I would rather make sure that the product is good for you when you're playing at 60, 70, 80% because that's majority around and when you play at 90% it feels even better. So look, that, that's enough of me waffling. You've seen the reviews on these. I've done a review on both of these irons. So um, you've seen that. Um, you can check that out if separately if you just want to know the details of each specific iron. But today it's more about me getting in the bay. I've, I've taken over the bay here at Milton Keynes and we're going to hit it and let's see what the track man numbers say. So, Let's, let's start with the Titleist T350. So for full disclosure, I've put in here the Nippon 105 stiff in both products. Um, so exactly the same shaft, so there's no misunderstanding there. I'm gonna use the Titleist um, left dash golf ball. So I'm not gonna preview one uh, left dash. So I'm gonna use that golf ball so you know exactly what we're testing so you can see some of the numbers. So let's get in, we're gonna hit a few shots with each um, and see how they feel. So, morning. Always that clicky feel off the T350. And as I get Mickey taken for me, it does pop off the face. There you go, there's your numbers, 184 carry. Oh, there's your fat one. So there's my, I don't, I'm not even sure that was a six out of 10. I think that was more of a um, three out of 10, that one. T3, the T350 even does have that softness of a tightless iron. It, it, you know, I've talked about this before. It does have that sort of softness and that forged feel. However, it's still, it's still, the sound for me is really clicky. Um, so although it feels all right, it's still pretty clicky. So that was pretty solid. What do we get out of that? So 90 club head speed, ball speed's okay, part's pretty good, spin's very low for a, Seven iron. Carries ridiculous. I mean, it, it does what it says on the tin, doesn't it? It just goes miles. Um, it pops up. What are we seeing there? So same sort of numbers, 183. So they're not too bad, the numbers there. Let me just have a look and see what the dispersion looks like on those. Obviously I've hit. The, the average shots there, you can see dispersion's quite wide, but that, I would say that's down to me mainly, but the distance overall was fairly consistent. So it's actually a, a fairly decent 
iron to look at. Um, in terms of some of the other data that's quite interesting, launch angles are 18.4 on average, hangs in the air for six and a half seconds nearly. So it really is quite a, a juicy iron in terms of its flight when it gets up there, which is great. So look, that's the T350. Let's transfer it over and let's try the Shrixen. So there was T350's numbers. Um, so ZX4, I think from the previous videos, we can all sort of see that I'm a fairly popular guy when it comes to Shrixen. I really like the way that works. It does always feel firmer. I don't know why, it just feels firmer. Um, I don't think it's going to be as hot as 350. I mean, how far right have I hit that? What's nicer is, and this is one thing that I did notice when I tested this originally, this iron, and all the Shrixen product, it does go a good distance, but one of the things that has always stood out is the land angle in a Shrixen iron. So it's coming down really, really steep. Um, so I think in the longer irons, you're gonna see that land on the green. And that last shot there, 50, 50 degrees, 51 degrees just shy of, is, is insane, especially at a distance of 185 yards carry. So let's hit a couple more. Toby. That was a decent speed. 194 carry, that's insane. That is insane. Look at the ball speed on that. So 92 miles an hour club head speed with 130 ball speed. So let's, let's be fair and do the take off the couple of bad ones. So what's interesting here is there's your consistency. Now one of the things I would say with the Shrixen is that the difference between the one that was super hot, the one that went a long, long way and the one that was kind of the seven, eight out of 10 was quite a big difference in yardage. You, you'll see here that that one that I absolutely nutted went 194 yards carry, whereas the kind of the average here is 180, 189, 173. So the dispersion between the real good and the bad, or let's say the 10 out of 10 and the six, seven out of 10 is, is about 20 yards. Um, yeah, it's about 21, 21 yards. So it's quite a big difference, which, may concern me a little bit with with an iron of this nature that you could be hitting into the green and if you absolutely pure one you're going to be over the back and if you don't quite get it right you might be in the front bunker so there's there's some difference differences to be had um, let's have a look there we can see the two different irons so i've got four four balls each. let's say the best four it's obvious that the shrixen's the longest you know, we can see that from it's hit the longest two shots. That is, is clear there. But the tight list is way more consistent in the yardage. So the 7 out of 10 through to the 9 out of 10, I didn't, didn't think I really busted one. So you could, you could argue that I didn't really smash one there. But what is clear is that when you're looking at those numbers, the, the tight list is probably more consistent for yardage. However the, the Shrixen's gonna give you more yardage. So that's quite interesting. Now, what also is fascinating is when you look at these land angles. So although I was raving about the Shrixen popping the land angle up to 50 degrees on a couple of these, obviously there was a miss strike, it's jumped through the floor, there it is. But for some of, most of these, they were in that 50, 50 degree territory, apart from that one, which I've obviously pull hooked. Um, but overall, they were very, very similar. The average is very similar, but the tight list never really got up above 50. 47 there is the max there. So, oh, we've got 50, there we go. We've got 150 and some 47s. So, I would say that overall they've averaged, as you can see, they've averaged the same number. So, not much in it. I felt that the Shrixen was gonna land 
would have landed softer more often in the longer irons. Um, spin wise, very similar. There's not a lot between it. Apart from that, there's not really a lot to choose these irons. You know, land launch angle. So it's what's fascinating. You know, you can we can say that the Titleist is better than the the Shrixen, or the Shrixen is better than the Titleist. But what is fascinating is, is over the five or six balls that are here, I've narrowed it down to those four. The numbers are incredibly close. Now we could say that that's down to me, absolutely. But I would say that these two products are aimed at a similar type of golfer. So therefore, you, you should expect the numbers to be similar that you know that you're not they're not trying to be a tour player's iron they're not trying to be a single figure handicap iron they're trying to be an iron that's going to help that kind of mid handicapper you know maybe nine handicap up to, to 20 even um, you could definitely even blend some of those irons the zx4 and t350 make great combo irons in the long irons for the four fives and six irons with the zx5 or zx7 and the T200 equivalent. So that's where these irons have a lot of, of power and they have a lot of um, uh, advantage over a, a lot of other brands is that they're able to combo into some of their, their better player iron as well. So, but looking at these two irons, I think if you were a middle to high handicapper and you just wanted a standard set of irons, I would, I would make it, I would say it's very difficult to put these two and say one's better than the other. I really would. However, there is one factor at play here, and that's price. The difference in price between the ZX4 and the T350 is quite dramatic. Depending on the set makeup, it could be as much as two, three hundred pounds. So it's a considerable difference. Custom fit wise, well, you, they're both excellent at custom fitting. They have super options in both. But this may come down to this argument may come down to look, both good looking irons, may come down to feel, both forged, brilliant feel, both of them. You know, you're not gonna pick a winner, I don't think, over those two. Custom fit options, you're not gonna pick a winner. They're, they're, they're both brilliant at custom fit. This is one of those times where this may just come down to price. So if you are a bit price sensitive, if you don't wanna spend the money, then the Shrixen is probably gonna win that battle every single day. I hope that was helpful. It was good fun to play with the Trackman numbers here at Milton Keynes. It's interesting when you hit these products against each other, how similar the numbers actually come out. Sometimes when we do this type of stuff and you see that, it's almost like, well, what was the point of that? That exercise was a waste of time. But I think it's good when you get two irons such as T200 and, sorry, T350 and ZX4, when you get those irons that are such similar and we obviously got requested for this test that if you were picking, if it was, if you were picking one of these irons, it would be, for me, based on your own personal feel and your own personal price. For me, there wasn't a lot to it, but also it would be really down to that price of the two irons. So I hope that was helpful. Guys, if you like our videos, remember it's time to hit that subscribe button, tell your golfing friends, make sure you follow us on the channel. And if there's any reviews that you would like to see or challenges of irons or product, it doesn't have to be irons, we could do it on putters, we can do it on uh, drivers, whatever it is, you know, head to heads, put them in the comments box below and me and Chris will make sure that we will film them in the coming weeks to help you in your 2024 season.